Hello everyone, and this is my review for Monday Night Raw on August 29th, 2016, and well, oh boy, <laughs> I'll get through all of Raw, and man, what a Raw it ended up being, uh, just in general, what it ended up being. Um, we'll go ahead and start with right at the beginning of the show, and then after that, I'm going to probably just go through some of the other matches, and I'm going to give some uh, little snippets through some of the uh, some of the other other things before talking about kind of the main point and focal point of the night. But they started off raw with four a um, with all four people for the Universal title in the ring. Corey Graves was going to do an interview. Uh, I, I, I loved. Uh, I love this promo. It, it was actually a very fun promo. Of course, it led into a brawl as I lower the armrest on my chairs, on my chair. Um, of course, it led into a brawl, but you had really good moments there, like Seth being overly confident, saying, "Oh, I don't need promo time. You guys, you guys, go ahead and do it." And he goes straight to Kevin Owens, and I love how Kevin Owens is trying to be all nice and everything. It's like, Corey, isn't that what you wanted us to be? It's like, all nice? Oh, you want us to be serious and starts doing his normal shtick. Kevin Owens. Great on the microphone. Uh, same with Big Cass. I actually liked what Big Cass was doing tonight on the microphone with everything. And, of course, uh, Roman to go along in there. Kind of starting the brawl and everything in that sense. And eventually uh, was the last one left standing. So uh, they're trying to tease us like, oh, Roman's going to win or something uh, something in that sense. I thought this promo and everything to, uh, to go along with it was actually a really good way of setting up for the Universal title match a little bit later on in the, uh, little bit later on in the evening. Now, um... Uh, because and one of the reasons why I would say that I won't go into the other stuff. One of the reasons why I say that is just like everybody kind of had their chance to shine in some way, shape, or form in this in this promo or something in that sense. Like Kevin Owens had his time, Seth had his time, Cass had his time, Roman had his time. So you got everybody, you got everybody involved in some way, shape, or form, which was truly the best way of going. Honestly, I felt that was the best way of going for uh, best way of going that for that in the terms of building it. It was just a really good way of building the actual match for later in the evening. Now, I wanted to go over some of the uh, other matches. First of all, you have Braun Strowman and Nia Jax doing jobber matches again. Uh, again, I don't have a big problem with this, especially since they're not going to put them in some kind of feud here. Um, the, and of course, they continued the jobber interviews and everything like that. Before Nia Jax's match, you had a backstage one with her opponent uh, that was filmed earlier, and then you had an, another uh, style of promo from Byron Saxton with the jobber inside of the ring before Braun Strowman came out. Um, what I liked about it was um, they called the Luchador Americo. Uh, in there, the thing I liked about Strowman, and he actually garnered heat for this because people actually understood about uh, luchadors and everything in that sense, or at least some of the people did. They garnered some heat. After he wins the match, he removes removes the mask. A uh, good way of getting heel. He I actually liked uh, that nice little touch that they put to there with Nia Jax's match. Kind of your typical fare, uh, and. In that sense of a squash match, so we'll see where they're gonna go and like what is their feud gonna be. Uh, obviously, obviously not even like I like the whole jobber idea, the jobber matches and everything in that sense. I like that idea personally, but you can't do it forever. Uh, so with that being said, it's gonna be one of those things like what are they gonna do next? Like where are they gonna go next with everything uh, for all of that? Uh, and like I said, we'll see where they go with everything. But uh, let's get into some of the other matches. Uh, this one didn't really have. It, it kind of had a fair from la uh, from last week from the uh, from setting up the fatal four way match, which was Jericho versus Chris Jericho versus uh, Neville. Uh, really good match from the uh, really good match from both sides here. I enjoyed it. It, it kind of resembled more of their Beast from the East match from a while back, and I liked the aspect of instead of just going into the walls of Jericho, uh, uh, Jericho actually used his variation, the other variation of it, the Lion Tamer, where he leans back and puts his puts their knee uh, puts his knee against their head. Uh, to do the Boston Crab, I think it makes it look a little bit more brutal, and it was, a, it also makes it look a lot more unescapable, at least for the person at the time. Uh, so I thought it was a really good match and really good what, uh, 
And, like, both sides got to show off what they could do, and Jericho uh, gets the victory in that sense. Maybe don't fully agree with the vi- who won, but, you know, in the end, it was what it was. Um, you had Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. Uh, I know not many people cared about it, uh, but they did allow for it to get, get some kind of time. Uh, Titus, um, no, sorry, st- stumbling over my words there. Lost my st- train of thought for a second. Um, but Titus O'Neil pretty much dominated the whole match, and Darren Young pulls out the victory in the end. Uh, standard fare, Titus O'Neil attacks him afterwards. They're, uh, they're trying to build him as some kind of heel. Uh, as some kind of heel here, and it's going to be really hard, especially after he botched up that promo last week. Uh, I, I mean, I feel for the guy in that sense, but um, I mean, we'll see where they go go with everything here uh, down the road. But obviously, they're not going to end the feud the way that they had everything go tonight. So we'll see how everything runs uh, uh, down the road here. Uh, let's see where else are we going to go? Up, uh, oddly enough, in just random matches tonight. Uh, they played off of it a little bit. Uh, they played off of the ankle injury a little bit last week with Sami Zayn with his match with Jinder Mahal. Uh, basically, th- that was kind of the storyline of the match, was like, could Zayn overcome the ankle injury? And obviously, at this point, you probably assume they brought back Jinder Mahal mainly to job out to people uh, at this point, which is a little bit unfortunate. We kind of hope some of those returns were in a ter- uh, in an area of potentially getting a push, but it looks like with Jinder Mahal, that's not going to be the case. So uh, it looks like he's going to be kind of one of those fall or uh, job guys for the t- uh, for the time being in there. So is what it is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, makes me makes me wonder why they even kind of brought him back. Uh, if, if that was the only purpose of it, okay. I mean, obviously that's what they felt like he was best for, but is what it is in that sense. Uh, you had Cesaro and Sheamus in the second match of the two out of three, uh, uh, not two out of three falls, but in their best of seven series. Uh, again, another good match. Uh, what you would expect from these guys. I like the aspect of Sheamus garnering, like the whole storyline of a best of seven. I like Sheamus garnering like a big, a bigger lead in the actual series. So he's up 2-0 now in this match. And it, I, I just like the, the way they ended up ending this match. Like you had the first match end, in, in the best of seven end with... Uh, with a broke kick. This time it ends after he uh, potentially hurts his hip, or Cesaro potentially hurts his hip or his lower back and gets put in the Texas Cloverleaf for the tap out victory. Um, good way of going and good way of switching up how the wins were going to happen. Uh, like it's not going to be the same finish over and over and over again. They switched it up this time to see where they go with um, when Cesaro's winning matches to go along with it. But overall, another really good match from both of them, and I thought it came off uh, it, it came off really good. Uh, I'm enjoying it, but it, it's one of those things like we have seen these guys wrestle so many times. Um, I, at least they have what I would consider an interesting storyline to go along with it. Uh, at least now they do. Uh, so we'll see how everything continues to go with that. Uh, you had in a backstage segment, in a couple backstage segments, so you have Bailey meeting up with the New Day. Okay, I, I I can personally see this one because obviously the Bailey character is supposed to be uh, a uh, fun-loving type character. Same with the New Day. Perfect, like perfect teaming up there. I kind of like that aspect. Uh, they get interrupted by Dana Brooke as they're doing their little shenanigans in the back in the uh, in the backstage area. And, of course, it uh, it ends up leading to, obviously, Dana trying to chastise Bailey and New Day in every way, shape, or form. And she says she would get Gallows and Anderson. And it sets up for a six-person tag, uh, tag match. You either have a little vignette, and I know... I know they really shouldn't be portraying Gallows and Anderson this way, but they are so good at doing... A um, a semi comical, but yet still putting down the people that they're going up against. Uh, in the, in this sense, you had them now becoming runners of a retirement business, and they talk about the aspect of um, what they did to the Dudleys the week before, and how they put them into retirement and everything in that sense, and that they were going to retire 
uh, the New Day's title reign at some point, and of course they had Dana Brooke in there. She was playing the nurse uh, in that se- in that sense, but like it came off really good. It really did, but I I still feel like they should be involving the club as a more serious team, at least at least in like even in their promo sense. Uh, like in ring, that's what how they portray them. But it's like in their promo sense, I would like to see a little bit more of that from that team. But still very entertaining. Luke Gallows is really good on the microphone. He really is, and so is Carl Anderson. Those two guys are really really good here. Uh, uh, on the mic. Uh, so this leads into the match with the club, uh, Anderson and Gallows, and Dana Brooke against the New Day and Bailey. Um, first of all, this was a fun match. Uh, the crowd was into it the entire time. Uh, and uh, one thing that, uh, and you even wondered this, like when Enzo and Cass came up and everything, like they debuted Bailey in front of the right crowd. In front of that Brooklyn crowd, uh, and and in that sense of everything, uh, you know, people that would know her already because it was kind of more of a smarky crowd uh, and a, an NXT style crowd, just like they did with Enzo and Cass. They uh, they put them in there with uh, they put them in there where the crowd can definitely know them to try to give them the best opportunity possible. Uh, but you've seen that happen so many times where they debut him after WrestleMania or this or that, and then it just kind of dies down, like all the way, th- uh, all the way down, uh, when they go to the other cities. Not so much here. But good reaction again for Bailey. Uh, just like with Enzo Cast, they didn't lose much of their momentum from coming to NXT to to the WWE. So far, Bailey has any uh, Bailey hasn't either. And like I said, I found this match to be. A very fun match. Good interactions from everybody inside of the match. Bailey uh, goes over Dana Brooke again with uh, with the Bailey the Belly, uh, and of course Bailey and New Day end up winning. They do the celebrations and everything in that sense. I uh, again just another really fun match. Uh, a lot of these matches actually were pretty good on the show tonight. Uh, to be to be very frank and honest uh, with everything about that. Uh, but up next, before I talk about the main event of the night, uh, you had Stephanie McMahon going out there and doing this thing with, uh, uh, doing a promo with Paul Heyman and saying, it's like, oh, you need to apologize for what happened and what, what happened to Shane and everything like that. And like the antagonizing yet, the, in, the antagonizing of Paul Heyman yet still trying to say he's sorry or something in that sense throughout the entire thing was just great. I, I liked this promo. I thought it was a really good promo from both sides. Like Stephanie making it look like she was not going to accept any kind of um, accept the antagonizing like even to the point of like uh, you know how was it uh, sometimes when people don't agree with a fine or something like that instead of uh, in sports, it's like, oh, we'll just send them a big thing of pennies, uh, a big thing of pennies for it, or one dollar bills, or something like that. Paul Heyman did that here. He was going to pay the five hundred dollars in one dollar bills. Uh, you could play whatever you want off of that to go along with it. Um, so, like I said, going through all that entire aspect, then eventually Stephanie's just like, yeah, I accept it, and then just storms off, uh, kind of in disgust, but not fully. In disgust, it was a, it was definitely an interesting and fun promo. We'll just leave it at that in, in that sense. I thought both came off relatively well inside of um, inside of the promo. You know, Stephanie kind of getting on Paul Heyman's case, yet Paul Heyman antagonizing at all at all corners. I thought it just came off really well in, in that sense of things. So. Again, it just it was a very good promo. Um, so this leads us to the main event. You had other vignettes throughout the entire night leading up into uh, into the match with Big Cass, Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins for the Universal title. You even had a thing with Foley and Stephanie McMahon talking to Seth backstage, making you think it's like, oh, Steph's going to be on, uh, or Stephanie's going to be on Seth's side, and maybe some shenanigans were going to happen. And, well, shenanigans did happen, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But for the entire match itself, 
it was a really, really good match. And, like, even to the sense of it was really good for Big Cass as well, because he was made to look strong to go along with, you know, still being eliminated first. He was still made out to look strong. Like, all guys were made to look good. Uh, in the in the early portions and and that and then Big Cass gets eliminated. So you have basically the triple threat going on afterwards with Kevin Owens and uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. And you know they're having that hard hitting. St- I wouldn't even say standard fair, but just that really hard hitting, really really good match. No no way can put each other away or e- everything in that sense. And it looks like Roman's getting the advantage. And out comes. Triple H, and this is where the shenanigans pl- uh, come into play. Uh, so Triple H comes out, pedigrees Roman Reigns, slides in the ring, puts Seth Rollins in there. Seth Rollins gets the cover, and everybody. Uh, I know there's a good chunk of people, even me, a little bit, even me, just a little bit. It's like, oh, okay, here we go, Seth Rollins, authority, blah 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 blah. This is how they're going to get rid of Mick and everything in that sense. And they don't show Stephanie on the camera yet, uh, like they show. Uh, Triple H looking at Foley, and Foley's like in disgust, but they don't show Stephanie on the camera yet, and like what her reaction is. You'll see that a little later. And he goes over, puts Kevin Owens in the ring, and it's like, so Seth Rollins, like, yeah, the typical thing because of the authority and everything like that. The commentators play it up really well and everything. And then, of course, well, you should see it coming because when you have three guys like that, and he's already knocked out one that he would typically knock out, the swerve's coming. And the swerve did come, where he pedigrees Seth Rollins. And Kevin Owens pins Seth Rollins to become the new Universal Champion. I like the swerve. This one I liked. Uh, I don't, I'm not always a big fan of the, swerve, uh, of the swerve, but in this sense it works. Because at that point, you've got heel versus heel. And now you've turned Seth Rollins babyface. And the fans had been crying to make him a babyface for quite some time. So with Triple H doing that, ends up making him that babyface in the end. You have Seth Rollins, uh, you have Kevin Owens as the heel champion, and now either Seth Rollins can chase or something like that. But the the aspect is, and we'll see how they play this off. Uh, but after, when like Triple H leaves, he stares down Foley. And he uh, semi stares down Steph, who has a look on her face like, "What's going on? Why are you here?" Which makes it's like, so if they decide to play off of it, they don't have to. They could just make it like, "Oh, Stephanie was in it, in on it the entire time," and just decided to make it look like she wasn't in on it uh, right off the get go. They could always play that, or they could play it as Triple H is invading Raw. With maybe NXT guys, Kevin Owens, NXT guy, technically Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins were as well, but like the main ones that were during the popular time of NXT. But honestly, if they truly go the, go the way of it, he should also go after SmackDown as well, <laughs> in that sense, because they could play off of... The aspect, oh, he plucked the they plucked the talent from NXT and everything like that during the draft, and this is going to be kind of his revenge. We'll see where they go with it. Uh, like that's kind of like fantasy style. Like we're going to see where they actually go with everything here. That uh, more than likely, the way I think it's going to go is that oh, Stephanie was in. Uh, uh, they would play it off as Stephanie's in on it all uh, all the way. But honestly, if they do the NXT t- style or in another invasion type style, it's like maybe Triple H does it because he was mad that Stephanie didn't pick him as the GM for Raw or something in that sense. Uh, you, we'll see where they go with everything here uh, in, that, in the sense of everything. So we'll see where they go with it. But I like the swerve. They leave you with questions. They give you a new champion, but they leave you with a question for next week to come back. So where are they going to go with everything? So, again, we'll see where they go with, uh, with, with that in, in the end. Uh, so, overall, like I said, actually, Raw was really good this week. It was a fairly good Raw. It was an, it was an entertaining Raw with some really good matches to it and, so, like, so, small, subtle storylines going along with everything. And 
uh, the big swerve at the end and some really good matches to go along with it. So uh, I can't say it was a bad Raw by any stretch of the imagination. This was a pretty good Raw uh, to go along, uh, to basically say everything. I, uh, I, I know people don't necessarily like the three hours, but sometimes they actually put on a good three-hour show. And, and you have to admit it when it actually happens. And when it's a good three-hour show, you have to admit it. There was a few down points in there, but overall, it was a good show in, in the end of everything. So, with that being said, that is my review for Monday Night Raw this week. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.